Well hello, today we're looking at some new antennas from Menace RC, but before we get into it, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done already, and don't forget to click that little bell to find out when I'm uploading stuff, because all those things really help the channel out. But anyway, what have we got today? We have got this thing called the Periscope, which is a long antenna, and this little small thing called the Thrasher. Now, I am a bit of a fan of Menace RC stuff. Going back to when I looked at their antenna pack, where you've got the, you had the Invader patch and several of their Pagodas. So I always used to use this one, and for linear, I would sometimes use this one called the Bandicoot. Um, and generally on my goggles, I now have the Pico patch, which is the smaller one, and one of the little Pagodas, which I think is called the Raptor. But it was a little bit short, so it didn't really go over your head that much. So what I used to do is use the flexible antenna extension that you got in that original antenna pack, which would make it longer like this. But I was always a little bit worried that this could create um, a loss because of this join here. And actually, Greg, who runs Menace, pointed me to some investigation he's done, which is pretty much that this does cause uh, the, the worst loss out of all of them in terms of the flexible cable. I'll link to uh, that document he produced at the bottom, although he said he wants to remeasure these because he's got um, better equipment now. So the periscope, now we've got it out of the bag, addresses that problem. It is a semi-rigid cable, so you can bend it to what shape you want, but you'll probably want it straight. And that already has a 90 degree bend on there, so that will get nicely above my head. So if I'm flying behind myself, my head's not blocking my signal. So that's a nice, easy, fix and should basically create a better signal so I'll be checking it out. The Thrasher is an interesting one it's a tiny stubby little thing and kind of the idea is for your racers and your uh, your freestylers that don't want to risk a large antenna getting caught on something like a racing gate or some trees or something this will not produce a big sticky out thing. Now I have to say if if you're using a covered antenna like this it's not too bad you can still get things like trees though and, and that will hook up and basically hang around from there. And one of the worries is, when you talk about these stubby antennas to people, they're like, oh, it's too close to the car and it's gonna create a really bad signal. So I thought what I'd do is take this out for a fly. This is the uh, Hobby Mate Comment, really nice uh, quad. Fly it with the included uh, Fox Air Lollipop, which is pretty nice uh, antenna. Pop the Frasher on and do a compare because there's, there's a balance really. It's, yeah. You might get a slightly worse signal if you have got your antenna close to the quad, but at the same time you're getting this balance about being able to take it through tighter obstacles and not risk getting it hung up. So it's a question of, am I going to notice the difference in a sort of open field? Um, and if there is a difference, is it worth it for the protection of not getting hung up on stuff? Which I think would be the interesting test. So I want to see if one of these gets much of a difference over a regular antenna. And then we can take a view on whether these are worth it for general use, or this is more of a, a racing thing, or if you're flying through lots of trees sort of thing. But yeah, let's go and fly and compare and see how they go. And I'll be using the Pico patch and the periscope on my goggles. If, by the way, you're wondering, is that a rapid fire? Why haven't I seen a rapid fire review? It is, uh, and the reason I haven't seen a review yet is I want to use it for a good couple of weeks to have lots and lots of flights with it to give a, a proper idea of how it, how it is on, on various cameras and various setups. But that'll be coming up soon, so look out for that. Well, the day didn't get off to a particularly good start with my flying field that I've been using since 2012 absolutely fenced off. Eek, what to do now? Okay, I'm behind enemy lines here. I can hear, um, just in the background over here, there's machinery going on, there's logs being cut. I did start walking over there, then I noticed the guys, I thought, I'll stay here. Now, I haven't done anything illegal to get in here. I've simply come through these woods here, which involves hopping over a stream, certainly, but there's no gates, so I think I'm in the right, but um, I don't think I'm gonna fly here. Well, I don't think I'm gonna get to fly here anymore. I think, uh, sadly, it's gone. What can we do? Well, the answer today is fly two batteries and get out of here really quick before anybody notices I'm here. So we're starting off here with the Foxeer Lollipop 2. And, well, there's not much going on in this field, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So I'm just sort of flying up and down, really, and, and having a quick look around. And, you know, it looks pretty good. The sun's come out for the first day in a couple of weeks and it's actually not raining and it's not blowing a gale. Hooray! And here's pretty much that same sort of shot on the Thrasher. I wasn't really 
following a, a set route here. I was just having a, a general sort of fly around with the idea is to try and keep, you know, reasonably low, although mix it up a bit really and see what's happening. And once again on the Thrasher, it, uh, yeah, it looks good. Um, not, not much difference I can see actually. Let's, let's put them side by side and see. Uh, yeah, very samey. To be honest, if I was doing just a, a little blind test of this, I could not tell you which antenna was on at any one time. So I was kind of expecting, you know, maybe it'd be a little bit worse on the Thrasher, but generally okay. But to be honest with you, I'm not able to tell the difference. There's certain places where the Fox here looks slightly worse, and there's certain places where the, the Thrasher looks slightly worse, and that's mainly due to the orientation of the quad versus the trees we got in the way and stuff like that. But um, honestly, they both look really good. So I know this is an open space. Uh, so, you know, th this this isn't going to do any any wonders when you're going behind trees and that. It's, it's not magic on either of them. Um, but the thing I'm trying to see if we've got a problem with is when you are flying away from yourself and coming back with the antenna, a, a sort of stubby antenna like the Thrasher, quite close to the carbon, people generally worry that it might get blocked by something. Um, and now admittedly on this I've got a battery on the underneath and it might be a slightly different situation if we had the battery on top, but as it stands it's not making a, a jot of difference, absolutely nothing. Now you don't want to see me fly around the field for five minutes so I, I invite you, if you're really into this stuff, I will upload both the raw uh, pieces of DVR footage and put a link to them, I'll, I'll keep them unlisted because you know, it, it's a bit a bit boring out of context. I'll even include the really annoying uh, DVR noise with it so you can have a look at your heart's content and tell me if you see if there's any degradation from using the, the Thrasher. So I was happy with the periscope, that was nicely above my head, not a problem there. And the Thrasher worked really nicely as well. It would be really quite hard to get that caught in something with these smooth edges. Uh, and I've actually in this particular quad there's a TPU mount for it so it's actually got some movability in there which is really good. Of course it's not quite as bad as the, the olden days. When I used to fly this one I've ruined VTXs by getting that caught and the whole SMA solder adapter has been ripped off <laughs> leaving my VTX trying to put out full power through nothing uh, and of course having a, a tricky solder job at the end of the day. Most of the current set of quads you'll find have some sort of little pigtail adapter that goes into the SMA adapter here and this will take the brunt of the hit instead of it going straight into your VTX so that's a good thing. Of course you can still get something like this caught up on a tree quite easily or to knock you out certainly much more than a tiny little stubby thing like that but yeah I was really impressed on the fact that having it didn't seem to have any detrimental effects I mean we're going along like this we've just most of the time we'll have nothing blocking us. As I said, if you've got the batch on top, might be a different situation, but that seemed to work really well. I was really impressed with it. Uh, of course, if you're not ever flying through stuff, if you're not going through race gates or under trees and stuff where you're not going to catch yourself anyway, um, then you don't have to worry about it and just use a regular one. But if you are, then I certainly, from, from my limited experience of racing, I caught the top of those uh, gates a lot when I had a, an antenna that was sticking up and you certainly recognise it because you, you spin out really quite nicely. Uh, and certainly I've, I've hung up in trees um, on this poor thing and uh, as I mentioned I've had damage caused by it. So definitely worth a look and uh, check the Menace RC site for that. Just as a quick update as well, I was talking about the losses incurred with adapters and bends. Um, since I did the first bit of the filming, Greg and uh, Lee, Painless360, have got together and made some videos about uh, looking at things in Greg's antennas lab. Uh, and one of the things there is about the loss involved with using adapters and bending coax cable. So uh, check that out, the, the, the video will be here and, and down below. And as I mentioned before, I'll have the link to Menace in general and those two flights on the DVR, if you notice anything and you, you think there's a, a massive difference, then uh, let me know in the comments. Until that time, I hope you found this video useful and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.